Hello and welcome to an EVE Online video on how I made so much money in this game. And let me just uh, show you right now the goods just to prove the case. So I have, so you know how Tr Donald Trump talks about billions. Well, I am worth more than Donald Trump if you include uh, EVE Online money. So uh, there's my money and just recently I actually sold a Rhea, which is a jump freighter, for seven and a half billion with a B. So there's definitely a lot of money there, and none of that was purchased by any kind of gold farmers. None of that was purchased at all. And I'm going to, in this video, discuss how I made all that money and kind of the progression of, of where I, how I started and, and etc. up to what I do now. So um, when I started out in this game, and I played it since beta, that was a long time ago. Uh, that was also a time when there were more people playing. So right now there's about 30,000 people playing on uh, on one server, but it used to be that there was probably about double that on multiple servers, but then they quickly switched to one server. And I've got my little friendly uh, rogue here just for fun, just to uh, annoy everyone who used to watch my videos a long time ago and knew that at one time I disputed the idea that... Uh, a, a roke, which is what I'm flying right now, could mine just as much as a coveter. And so I'm just going to do that while I'm talking uh, about my history and playing this game and how I got started. And I kind of like the whole uh, the whole look of having like how many lasers going at once here. Jeez, I can't even. I got to move this stuff like way out of the way to even get all my lasers. There we go. So if I get like four of them going for another one. There we go. Look at that. Look at all those lasers. See, that cannot be questioned, all those lasers. Uh, when you have a Colvetter that's got like two on it, that can't be questioned. So anyways, um, so how I got started in this game, I recommend you join a corporation and you do mining and group mining. Because when you're starting this game, you should do all the tutorials and you'll get some ships and you'll get um, a little bit of experience and you'll know how to do some missions and etc. So pretty much at the start you need should be either doing mining or missioning to get some money. So with missioning you'll you'll get money from completing missions and also some of the loot you get from ships and all that. And also from mining of course the the loot is the the ore and the ore you can sell for isk or you can use the ore process it into minerals and of course use that for um, Oh, hold on, or use a, I'll use a little uh, uh, can here too, I'll do some jet cam mining, just for the hell of it. Okay, so um, you'll either start out with mining or missioning. And I recommend you do that in a corporation, because in a corporation you can do bigger missions with, with other people, or you can do what are called um, gang, uh, uh, where you have a whole bunch of people that are mining at once, and you have a hauler so that instead of you mining into your capacity is filled with some crappy ship and then going to a station unloading it coming back out doing some mining for 10 or 20 minutes and you're filled up again you go back to a station that wastes a lot of time in a corporation when you have other players and the corporation is the same thing as a guild in world of warcraft then you can have uh, someone hauling the ore for you and then you can split the uh the total at the end the other thing is is that if you get an, if you get into a, an established corporation, you will um, also be able to. Uh, some of my some of my lasers turned off on me. You will also be able to um, get someone who can boost. So there's certain ships that when you're in a what's called a fleet, which is like a party from other uh, MMOs, when you're in a fleet, you can have a, what's called a fleet booster, and that guy can can boost as in buff all the, everyone in the fleet or in the party and one of those buffs is uh, mining yield and the another buff is actually if you mine ice later on they decrease the um, amount it takes uh, the, the time it takes to mine the ice or if you're doing ore like this like I'm doing right now then you get more yield with a boost so another reason to join the corporation when you're starting out is for that boost. You'll get a buff to your mining and you'll mine more per second than you would on your own. So that's another reason why to join a corporation when you're on your own because you're defenseless and, and poor when you're on your own. So of course you need to uh, 
to get with other people. Another thing I did is, but this was more of a, just a strange thing that happened to me. And I, when I was doing all this, by the way, I was way out in Devoid, which is a region past Amar space. We were in Devoid because at the time the servers were very populated and you couldn't just sit in the forge, for example. You had to kind of get go out and there even was, uh, there was caps on um, how many people could be in a system at a time and they would kick you out if you were, um, if the system got too overloaded. So you had to spread out. And so I was way out in Devoid region and they had huge belts out there. Um, the belts like, the, see this belt? This belt is not very good. Uh, because it's mined, it's over mined, so you'll see the so it's just tiny rocks, right? But if you go way out to places that very few people are, you'll see huge rocks. You'll see like moon-sized rocks, and that's where you want to be uh, if when you're starting out for mining, because then you could just mine that thing for an hour. These giant like moon-sized asteroids. Okay, uh, so a, a weird thing that happened to me when I was playing is I was in a corporation that they, they were very industrial-centered. And they actually um, bought, they bought minerals and they bought salvage from their players, from their, uh, from their court mates. And they, the thing is, the guy who ran the, the, the corporation, he was a wealthy guy, but he, he wasn't very, um, he wasn't updating his prices very often. So what actually happened is I would be watching the market prices and then he'd have a corporation list on a website or something like that. And sometimes some of the salvage, his price was like double the price of the market price. So I actually bought salvage off the market and then sold it back to my corporation and made double money. Now, I didn't make a ton of money doing that. I might have made a couple mil doing that total, but that was a long time ago. But that certainly gave me a boost at the beginning. But I wouldn't call that a significant boost, but it certainly helped. So accumulating a bit of cash, doing those mining runs, getting a, a proportion of the um, of the ore that was mined or the isk, or I think we were just I think they were just bought out, so we just got isk for it, and the salvage stuff, um, and also my corporation would buy other things like ships or modules, like they'd say, hey, if you we need. Um, make us a bunch of stuff and we'll give you a decent price on it. So I would do things like that. Anything that actually made me money. So I was always kind of doing the, the calculations. So it's always good to start with a, with a corporation, for sure. They will definitely give you a boost. Then what happens is you start into manufacturing stuff that you sell on the market. So you will start, I started with drones. So you'll get blueprints to make drones. You can, you can buy blueprint copies, for example, but of course you gotta make sure that you're making money so you got to do the math and decide whether the drone the value of the drone in terms of its minerals is worth making compared with the market price you have to do the math you, you want to be an industrialist in this game you, you have to use a calculator it's just it, it's, it's, you have to so you would do the math and I would find out that the um, the uh, what the drones were called the, the drones that have really really long range are the ones that I made a lot of money on I remember I can't remember what they're called now, though. Uh, the ones that shoot relief, the sentry drones, I think they were called. The sentry drones I made a lot of money on. And um, eventually, I think I was just buying copies, though, because copies had a lot of runs, like 300 or 500 runs at a copy, I think. So that I, I used, and that uh, did me well. Then I would make some modules as well. But then I started getting into ships. I never built shuttles. Shuttles are, are there's no money in shuttles. But eventually, I did... Um, I get into frigates and then cruisers and then I just kind of go I just kind of increases like that you just you, you build frigates for a while and they sell for I think they sell for like 50,000 or something like that and then cruisers sell up just under a mill or about into the mills maybe one mill two mill for cruisers and then you build battle cruisers and you see how it ramps up battle cruisers and battleships and then Beyond that, you might start doing T2, or you might start doing um, uh, some of the the indie, some of the, the transport ships and things like that. Or you can also then jump into um, orcas or things that cost like that's 300 mil. And then freighters are really expensive now, but they never used to be. Freighters are over a billion, and uh, and etc. You kind of ramp up that way, and this is how you do it. So what happens is, is you'll always start out with copies. 
because copies are really cheap. But blueprint originals, eventually you want to get. And I did that, and I can show you that. Maybe I'll stop these lasers just for so that they don't bother me. So let me show you that. Uh, so let me go to the corporation here, and I'll show you all the blueprints that I bought along the way as I was making. Uh... So here's so here's modules that I have. These are I think all originals. These are all modules that I made. Some of them I didn't spend a lot of time making modules, so that's really there's here's drones. So I certainly made drones. So you can see here these ones up here are um, uh, sentry drones, and they actually made me decent money at the beginning. But again, you'll have to do the calculations yourself because that all could have changed now. And I didn't—I don't think I made a lot of ammo. I think that was just for all for my convenience. I could just make a few instead of having to go and buy them. But eventually, um, I would start making frigates and stuff like that. So that's in here. So you'll see in here um, of all kinds of blueprint copies. These lighter ones are copies, and the darker ones are originals. And you see, you see, I have some copies sitting around. There's even Covetter ones, which I saw somewhere, Covetter. So you can get into the mining ships too. But then there's assault ships like these things. Or, I mean, destroyers. Destroyers. And then there's a frigate. There's, I think that's a frigate. There's a, that's a battle cruiser, the Brutex. And uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is an indie ship. And Arbitrator, I think, was a, was a cruiser. So... You just kind of build from there, and you buy the copies, eventually you get the original, then you want to do some research on it. So remember, the originals are expensive. They're millions of ISK, whereas the copy would be under a million for these cruisers and stuff. But then eventually you'll, what you'll do is you'll research up that original, or you might find a good price for it just on contract, someone just trying to get rid of stuff. You, you research and work up that original so it's it's worth using to build stuff from so you'll work on the the uh, ME and the PE on it and then now instead of buying copies you cut that cost and now you can just use the original to make as many as you want you just keep making that as long as it's profitable and as you're making more and more profits then you're moving up you're always moving up so then once you once you're done with cruisers you can move up to battle cruisers. Once you're done with battle cruisers, you move up to, to battleships. And the other thing that you do is once you're getting up in the battleships, you're, you'll certainly have 50 mil or so, probably in your in your wallet. What you do is you copy with a with a lab, and maybe even with a tower if your corporation has one, you will copy your old originals and make a little bit of cash off them. So what you do is, so for example, you're not making battle cruisers anymore. You're finished with them. So these hurricanes, for example, you're done with battle cruisers. I think this is a battle cruiser. And what you do then is you start copying the hurricane and then selling the copies on contract. And that's just extra cash. Now, there are added taxes in this game, so you have to watch that. So it may not even be worth making the copies anymore. But that's something else that I used to do is I would, once I was finished, using an original to manufacture. Once that was retired from manufacturing because I was moving up, then you use that original and copy it and sell the copies for extra cash. And you just keep doing that. So you move up to battleships, now you're manufacturing battleships, but you're copying battle cruisers. And then now where I am right now, I'm manufacturing carriers and dreadnoughts and freighters and I copy freighters and battleships, or I used to. I've, I still copy, well, I, I don't copy anything now, but I used to copy certainly freighters, and then a, even longer time ago, I used to copy battleships, but I don't do that anymore. But that is what I used to do. So you would manufacture what you're doing, what your current thing is, and you're copying what you just left. And you're always building up the BPOs and then copying those BPOs later to make, uh, make uh, copies to sell. And whatever you're manufacturing, you're likely to be buying copies to manufacture until you have the ISK to then buy the original to cut the blueprint copy cost out of your... So, for example, when I first started making freighters, I would just buy copies, I would make a freighter, and then I would ha I would haul it or I would have an, a friend um, haul it to Jetta for me. I should mention, when I was getting into battleships, I actually was out in the forage in, I remember the system was called Jackanerva, and 
I couldn't fly any freighters at the time. So one thing in this game in EVE Online is that is skills take time. They don't. It's not about doing anything. It's not as if like there's no leveling up in EVE Online. It's not as if you go out and you can just grind monsters all day. Skill. This is the the only leveling up in this game is these skills, and these skills just take time. That's it. You just set it and forget it, and it doesn't matter what you do. You could be offline uh, for a day and 17 hours, and then this will just go. This will just tick away. You don't have to go and grind. There's no grinding in this game. The only thing you would grind for actually is reputation and standings and stuff like that. But that's a whole other topic, and I've already discussed that in a different video. Uh, so. So what I used to do when I was making battleships is I couldn't fly a freighter at all, I just didn't have the skills. And so I actually had a friend who in this in this game, who was in my corporation, actually used to be, it was, it was called Orcor, it's this one right here, this Orcor, I still have the channel actually open just for fun. Uh, they was they were called Orcor, Orcor Madness, that was the uh, corporation, the old corp. And we had an alliance at one time too. Uh, but uh, so a guy I used to uh, play with in this game, this was a long time ago, this was probably five or six years ago, um, he, he could fly an obelisk, which is a Galente freighter, and he would fly all my battleships down for me. So I remember I used to make tons of scorpions, for example. That's a battleship, that's a Kaldari battleship. They sold very well. I wonder if I have that stuff hanging around here. So here's all my battleships, like Apocalypses. These are Amar battleships, uh, um, Armageddon's. Cyclones is a battle cruiser. Dominix is a Galente battleship. Drake's battle cruiser. Uh, Fenrir's are, are, yeah, I guess they're right here. I don't have to say them. I don't have to read them out. Uh, that's a Mimitar freighter, of course. But I remember I used to make tons of scorpions. What if I have? Oh, there it is right here. So this blueprint original right here. I used to uh, manufacture tons of scorpions. I'm not sure what else. I don't think ravens ever sold that well because tons of people made ravens. So they didn't. The profit margin was lower on them. But I, I do remember making scorpions, maybe some mega megathrons. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter. But so I used to um, make that stuff, and then I had no way of moving them, and I certainly didn't want to move one scorpion at, at a time because I was my race in this game is Kaldari, and I did have skills for flying Kaldari ships, so I could fly the scorpion, but I only would be able to fly one scorpion at a time to Jitta and sell it. But that would take forever because I was probably building about five or six or eight or ten at a time so there's no way I was doing that so I actually had another player in this game Paul with his obelisk stuff for me to Jitta and then um, and then when it's once it got there I would then put it up to for sale and I would pay him for that I, and he actually I think at one time wouldn't take any money but I paid him for that because that's his time even though he just kind of went AFK and hauled it for me but so that's another thing that was great, is that if you don't have the, the skills to do stuff, then you need someone else to, f to fly it for you. I remember also that when I started making freighters, so freighters were much more expensive. Like, I think battleships at the time were like maybe, t uh, what were they, maybe 50 mil or 60 mil. Freighters at this time were probably 700 mil. And um, once I got up to freighters, and I would buy, of course, the copies first, and then I would just manufacture them. Only it took a lot longer for me to actually buy the blueprint originals for freighters because they're billions of isk. They're very expensive. Uh, a lot of the freighters I could not fly at all. Like I could fly the, um, I could fly the Kaldari freighter, whatever it's called. Now I forget. Uh, but I couldn't fly anything else. And so what I again what I had to do is I had to get my uh, friend to do it. So here this this one this one right here. The um, Kaldari freighter is called whatever, whatever it's called, um, the Charon. So I, of course I could fly a Charon, but I couldn't fly an Obelisk. I could not fly a Providence, but my my other player in this game could. So I would give him the fr the Providence, and I actually would just launch it out of the maintenance array, and then he would get into it and then fly it off to Jitter for me because I couldn't fly it myself. But actually now in this game you can buy. It's called a Bull. Is it Bullhead or something like that? Jeez, it's called something like that. I think it's, it's an old head? It's something head. But they, there's a freighter now in this game that you can get. Oh, there is Bowhead. This, <laughs> and this freighter hauls other freighters. So instead of having to get all the skills to fly each freighter, there's four freighters in the game, four racial freighters, you can just get the skill to, to fly this Bowhead 
and then you can put in the bowhead any other freighter you want, which I think, you know, I never had a problem with that because I can fly all the freighters now, but oh well. So that's something else that's kind of neat that happened and helped me out um, in the game. Uh, so, but eventually, of course, you can fly it yourself and there's no worry about that. So after I got into freighters, I would, you, you start making a lot more money when you get into freighters. Like I think the profit margins on the freighters are about 50% at the time. So it was just, you just started really really making a lot of money um, then you can move into other things and these are more riskier things so you can do t2 for example and I never found any money in t2 except for uh, jump freighters but jump freighters are very expensive we're talking like seven and a half billion which is what I just recently sold a Rea a Rea is a jump freighter Kaldari jump freighter so it looks like this except it's a t2 uh, freighter that's seven and a half bills. So that's long time. That's that's a long term goal. Let's say uh, that's T two, that, and that's safe. But if you want to do un less safe things, then you then you build in low sec. Now, there's a whole another area of Eve that exists in PvP areas, and that's low sec and null sec. It's called in low sec and null sec. You can build carriers and dreadnoughts and then at particular player stations and some towers you can build motherships and titans but that's something that I've never done but I certainly have built uh, and I still do I still built uh, still build uh, carriers and uh, dreadnoughts so down not Sela I do build that stuff so there's a Shimra this is a Kaldari uh, carrier I think it's worth one and a half or so, Bill. So it's sitting there waiting to be sold. And I always pair that with, with uh, the jump freighter fuel for it, just as a kind of convenience and a little bit of a incent, uh, incentive for people to buy it. And then I've got a Revelation down here, which is a Dreadnought. That's a... I used to call it a, an EVE Online catapult, but apparently it's not that anymore. It used to be that Dreadnoughts couldn't hit anything. Ex unless it wasn't moving, so dreadnoughts were only really good for killing titans and for uh, or, and uh, killing towers. But apparently that's changed now. So now the dreadnoughts more versatile. Fine, I don't really care. Uh, I just make them and sell them. So dreadnoughts I think are worth over two bill. But you start getting into that. So doing low sec is a whole nother deal because this isn't safe space. In low sec you can be attacked and blown up, and there's no cops. Like if you've ever played World of Warcraft, if you attack someone in a city then you get the guards on you. And sometimes you can escape, but usually you don't. Uh, so think of high sec as always being in a city. So if someone attacks you, the other player always gets blown up immediately. Uh, low sec is in a P on a, like a WoW PvP server, not in a city. So you can be attacked uh, pretty much anywhere, and there's no recourse. There's no, one's, no police, no NPC police are going to show up to defend you. So you have to be wary of that when you're in low sec. Uh, luckily for me, I've only been caught once, but I wasn't blown up because the other person didn't know what they were doing. So um, what you do is you have to haul in minerals to build stuff in low sec. And so what I do is I haul in the small stuff. Isogen, Megasite, um, not Mex, uh, Noxium I do, and Zidrin. But then I put buy orders up. So that means that players will come to the station and sell their minerals to me. So I don't then have to haul the stuff there. I, I buy all the big stuff. So Tritanium and Pyrite and um, Mexalan, I buy from other players, other pretty much pirates in both sec. And then I use the minerals to make the dreadnoughts and stuff. So that's the last, that's the, the ending step there. But what I'm going to do now is, um, so that's my, that's my, so before we get into the spreadsheet, there's something else I want to mention is I also used to place a lot of buy orders around and that what that means is that you it's almost as if like a looking for ad. Uh, what you do is you put a buy order out and then you're saying I would like 100 million tritanium and I'm willing to pay this price. And then other people, if they're not willing to wait to sell their stuff by putting an order up, which means it's like, hey, I'm looking to sell they can just sell to your order immediately and get their money if they sell into your buy order. And so what you do is if you're, so I don't really mine much anymore. I just buy the minerals pretty much. 
And, because, and of course, because I'm, I consume tons of minerals because I'm building huge ships that are billions of isk, right? Uh, so I buy most of my minerals. And what I do is I set up buy orders in various systems that I are convenient for me to pick the minerals up in. And I set a, a price that is a good competitive price for me. And also, I think, a convenience to those who sell it. Now, that's different in the low sec station. That is a station where I set the price high because of the convenience. I'm, I'm getting a huge amount of convenience by buying the ore there in low sec or buying the minerals I made. And the person who's selling the, the minerals to me is taking a risk in bringing it in or, be, or if they're a pirate, whatever. And so the price on that buy order is high for titanium to try to get the demand in for people to sell it to me. And other commodities, so it's not just minerals that I used to buy on biota, but also ice. So ice is very big uh, to move around. Every ice cube is a thousand meters per cube. It's very big. And if you don't have a, um, even with a transport ship, you can only maybe haul 60 or 70 around. But if you're trying to haul hundreds, then that's pretty cumbersome. What I would do is I would put buy orders for ice at about 10% less of the value of the ice in systems with their ice field, fields. And people who, who didn't have freighters or have access to freighters, they instead of hauling it really slowly, they would just sell it to me and then I would haul it all just in a freighter. And so I would make money that way as well. But what I'm gonna do now is, um, so that's my that's my tour, that's my history, really, of playing EVE Online, the stuff that I've done to make money and et cetera. So what I'll do now is um, I'll show you the spreadsheet that I use, just a little bit of it, because I don't want to I don't want people copying necessarily all of my t uh, tactics in this game. Uh, but if you have any questions, you certainly can uh, leave it in the video. But what I'll do now is I'll switch to just discussing the spreadsheet I use, which does all the calculations for me, and I update it with the mi current mineral prices and etc. And it lets me decide what to make because it shows me once I update all the mineral prices and then I update what stuff's going for, so what the freighter prices are, etc. Then it shows me, hey, this is the best profit margin. Like this, the Providence has a 20% profit margin, whatever, right? So that's what I do to decide what I make. So anyway, so now I'll discuss the uh, spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you just a picture of uh, one little one area of my spreadsheet. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I'm not going to give you like a, a tutorial of, of my spreadsheet because it is kind of uh, how I've done very well in the game. And I don't necessarily want to make that public. Uh, I certainly have been asked about that and even asked to uh, have my spreadsheet. But I think something like that would, would require a briefcase of cash uh, pretty much. So anyways, um, so you see here, I've got the freighters uh, listed. And what I have is I have separate uh, tabs in the Excel spreadsheet that do all the manual calculations of the components and their cost. Um, and then this main page, which you're only seeing one small part of it, it goes up another 65 lines and then over a bit, all of the... All of this is showing kind of the results of all the underlying calculations. And all I have to do in this particular spreadsheet is I input mineral prices. And that's pretty much it. Like if you're going to do T2 stuff, you have to add all the T2 components. But if you're just looking at mineral only items, such as most T1, pretty much all T1 chips, uh, and even capital T1 chips, then you only have to worry about minerals. So what I've got here is I've got the freighters right in the middle there. And actually, this bowhead is a new freighter that actually can haul freighters, but there's really no money in it right now. But that's a new freighter. Anyways, uh, so I've got here both the capital component market price. And what that means is, what is the Charon, for example, what is the Charon worth with its capital components only? And just below there, you can see the market price that I've added. So you see the 80, see the armor plates just below the freighters, armor plates. And then over to the right, two uh, columns, market price, 84, 84, 129, et cetera. Those are all in millions, by the way, 8.4 million, 8.4 million, et cetera. 
And those are the market price that I put in. And that's the price it would cost you to buy it. On the, just to the left of it is the mineral cost. So you can see I've also been calculating what the components are worth and what they require to make. So you could even make uh, cargo bays, for example. And if you were to sell them, you would get about 5% profit. Now, minus taxes. So you wouldn't make much money. It wouldn't really be worth it. So going back to the freighters now, the reason why I calculate the capital component market price is because it may indeed be the, the, the capital components may be worth more than the Charon. That's why I calculate that, that first. And so you can see this here. It says, look, if you make a Charon, the capital component market price is 4.4, uh, 1.423 bill. The market price right now is 1475. It's a bit lower than that right now, but that's just, uh, I'll just use that for now. And even with a market price of 1475, you would make a profit of about 50 mil, which is 3.63% minus taxes, of course. But now, but have a look at the Orca. And the Orca's price, I think, is accurate. I think it's about 700 right now. The components of the Orca are actually worth 757 mil. The market's only 700, so you'd actually be losing a bit of money. The components the orca is made of is are actually worth more than the orca. So then you wouldn't want to make the orca. Now, just to the right, if you keep going to the right, past the profit percent, past the bold print, you see on the side here, I've also got calculated the mineral cost profit. So if you just ignore the, the capital components and just focus on the minerals only, there's a mineral, mineral cost profit. So if you only consider the minerals, making a churn will yield you 150 mil. And the, and the profit there uh, is 11, 11%. And the same with, so the Fenrir, et cetera, 191 mil is the mineral profit. And that it yields about 15%, et cetera. So you can do all, all those calculations I'm, I do behind the scenes. And I only have to in, input the mineral prices. And then that tells me what's profitable to make. Now I've got all that going on for carriers, for dreadnoughts as well. I've also got a calculator for fuel costs for the tower. Everything's in here. And this has made this has been a fairly easy game, uh, may, uh, focusing on this spreadsheet and just inputting the mineral prices. So I don't have to update every day, but I update every now and then. And then putting the market prices for the various things I build, like freighters, etc. Even Raya, the Raya calculator as well to see what the right now the Raya is actually not worth building. The uh, the cost of about seven bill is actually about the the cost to make one, so I don't bother with that. So yeah, that I just thought I'd show you quickly that spreadsheet and uh, show you a little bit of what I do. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or things you want to see in EVE Online now that you think I would be uh, some help to, uh, some help to, for you.